The setting of Fallout is a divergent universe from our own, one in which nuclear war came to pass, leading to worldwide devastation. Each entry to the series is held within the former United States of America, seen as a blasted shell of its former self. As a player of the series from outside the US, however, you do start to ask the question, what does the rest of the world look like in the Fallout universe? In starters, I should clarify that for most countries, other than the US and its direct neighbours, we know very little. I also don't want to hold you captive while I fill up an entire video with mostly speculation, so if you are interested in a particular region, you can access it via the timestamps. I should also state that the descriptions and references in the following countries are based on a fictional universe to our own, and are not representations to their real world counterparts. We'll begin with an overview of the world prior to the events of Fallout. Sometime after 1945, the world diverged from our own, although there were notable differences seen even before this. The world hegemony established itself relatively similar to our own, with America emerging as the world's superpower after World War II. The key difference visible is the conflict which led to the current state of the world. Categorised as the resource wars, conflicts began to erupt as the world's nations began to turn on each other in their bid to control the dwindling resources of uranium and petroleum. The United States struck first, invading Mexico in order to maintain the continued supply of petrol to their nation. A year later, the European Union, or Commonwealth as they're known in this universe, deployed troops to the Middle East to secure their oil fields, leading to the outset of the Euro-Middle Eastern War. This led to many casualties, the first being the dissolution of the United Nations, and sparked the first nuclear exchanges since World War II, when Tel Aviv was destroyed. The war eventually fizzled out once the oil fields ran dry. The American Sino War broke out six years after, when China invaded Alaska to appropriate American oil resources. The brutal fighting sparked a dramatic escalation in the world conflict as the two world superpowers battled for supremacy. Neighbouring countries such as Canada and an undetermined amount of nations within Asia were annexed to feed the bottomless pit of war. And it all came to an abrupt end, the day the bombs fell. The resource war gave way to the Great War, one of the shortest and most damaging conflicts in history. The world's nations crumbled under the weight of nuclear Armageddon and were barely recognisable once the fallout cleared. Starting with their closest neighbour, Canada had technically ceased to exist before the outset of the Great War after their annexation by the US. Referred to as Little America, the provinces and territories of Canada became protectorates, falling under harsh military rule. Canadian freedom fighters and rebel forces engaged their occupiers, but were no match for their power armour wearing adversaries. Canada post-war is imagined to be in a similar status to the United States. Canadians are found in game, with two being Marge Labarge and Dave Handy confirming they'd been born up north. Toronto is even referenced via its new name, Ronto, and referred to being akin to the Commonwealth or Capital Wasteland, suggesting a sizeable community has developed. And while it's not exactly canon, a large area of Canada can be accidentally destroyed after activating the death ray found on Mothership Zeta, with the target location indicated to be Algonquin Provincial Park. Canada ultimately would have suffered immensely in the years after the bombs fell, as the country had been incredibly destabilised in the years prior. Given its proximity, we have a relatively good understanding of America's other neighbour Mexico. Raul Tejada was born in Mexico prior to the Great War, and gives a first-hand account of the devastation caused to the nation. Mexico City was directly hit with nuclear weapons, although not as heavily bombarded as locations in the US. The country had already been dealing with civil unrest in the years prior to the Great War, but degenerated even worse after the fallout. Raider gangs began to form almost immediately, capable of shamelessly murdering young children such as Rafael Tejada. Mutated creatures such as Night Stalkers are also confirmed to be hunting in the country. Things were bad enough that a group of Mexican survivors were even willing to journey all the way to Zion National Park rather than remain put. In more recent times though, Parts of Mexico such as Baja have been colonised by the NCR. There appears to be a degree of importance to the area, especially since squads of the NCR's most elite rangers have been deployed to maintain order in the region, rather than deployed to the more pressing conflict brewing the Mojave. The language used that the rangers were chasing ghosts in Baja had been described by project director Josh Sawyer as intentionally mysterious, which suggests a certain degree of development within Mexico. In regards to the countries of South America, we have very little in-game sources to base anything off. However, given the fact that the resource wars were primarily fought for access for oil, a resource that many South American countries are large exporters of, 
it is quite telling that they don't have many references. The US was even willing to invade Mexico, while China was willing to invade the US to access their oil. The fact that such attempts were not made on relatively smaller targets, such as Brazil, Venezuela or Colombia, seems to suggest that the area itself may have been devoid of their natural resources. This naturally would have then led to economic spiral that would have destabilised many of the countries. The lack of attention from the Great Powers may have unintentionally come in handy though when the Great War had broken out. The region no doubt would have been hit by nuclear blasts, and even suffered from the nuclear fallout in the Earth's atmosphere. They would have been hit far less intensely compared to the US however, which as we can see, is slowly returning to life in areas that were nearly annihilated. The only thing I can see having a severe impact on the survival of communities in the area would be what kind of predators have been affected by the mutations. I can only imagine the potential size of anacondas, or how ferocious piranhas may have evolved to be, if they obey the often wacky laws of evolution seen in the Fallout universe when exposed to radiation. I'll also follow this up quickly by saying that, like South America, we have little to no sources for the nations in Africa. I therefore won't really go into any detail on these as it would be entirely speculation. However, I would hypothesize that like South America, Africa might not have been too directly targeted given the lack of mention to any superpowered nuclear states on the continent. As mentioned earlier, the European Commonwealth, as they were known in this universe, became bogged down in a decade-long war in the Middle East to lay claim to their oil fields. The war was ultimately Pyrrhic, as the fields ran dry, after which the European powers withdrew from the region entirely. The European Commonwealth would then turn on one another and became embroiled in a devastating civil war, as each of the nation-states became hellbent on controlling the remaining resources on Earth. Not much is known of the individual countries within Europe, as the main references indicate it as the European Commonwealth only, suggesting a high level of inter-country cooperation prior to the outbreak of war. Countries such as Germany, however, were indicated to be the primary exporters of energy weapons to the United States, suggesting a high degree of technological sophistication. This may have enabled them to reign as a power in the region prior to and after the Great War, However, it also is highly probable this may have had a reverse effect and made them more of a target for less powerful states to launch their nuclear weapons at. Prior to the Great War, the United Kingdom was confirmed to have a ruling queen, given that Mr. Handys can be heard yelling, For Queen and Country! Great Britain does receive an in-game reference, given the appearance of Alistair Tenpenny, a rich, elderly eccentric Englishman who migrated to the US in recent years. He is described by the developers in the following statement, Alistair Tenpenny came to the capital wasteland from Great Britain to seek his fortune, so that alone tells you that the UK was also hit in the war. And if he came to the US to succeed, that says a lot about how screwed up Europe must be. So we allude, just a little bit, to the state of the rest of the world. We like to leave a lot to the players' imaginations, and somebody like Tenpenny serves as a catalyst for those thoughts. That last bit obviously rings true, since I'm making a whole video on the topic. And it certainly raises interest on the status of Europe and the simple fact that if you've been able to make it to the capital wasteland, there must be some form of communication or at least boats passing between the US and the UK. In the Fallout universe, the Soviet Union never dissolved. However, we do not know exactly which countries were incorporated into the USSR. In-game maps can be located which do depict a multitude of former Soviet states such as Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia as retaining their natural land borders while the territory of the USSR seems to fit with our universe's Russian Federation. It's unknown if this was simply a development oversight, or if the Soviet Union itself only really covered the Russian state. Although tensions remain frosty, similar to the real world between the US and Russia, it appears they never entered into a Cold War. The USSR, alongside China, were the nations that the US defense analysis run the most simulations in prediction for the Great War. It appears evident that the USSR experimented with human mutation that had a hand in the development of the US's FEV program. Evidence of this comes from the ghoul Michael Masters, who in pre-war times was stated to have worked on human mutation experiments to breed super warriors after being inspired by Russian experiments. Despite their ideological differences, the US and the USSR were in cordial relations in comparison to other nations. Soviet citizens were still able to migrate to the US, such as the Raider Lev. However, the US did engage in Red Scare propaganda and emphasized the idea that US citizens may wind up in Soviet labor camps if the war had been lost. It is unlikely that the USSR survived the war intact, as such a large expanse of territory would become isolated and unwieldy in the post-war world. 
It's also likely that given its size, power, and nuclear capabilities, it would have been a prime target for China, the US, and many other countries. The status of the region is speculative, although given its size, there imaginably may be remote areas of the former nation that were not directly hit, and may be in comparatively good shape compared to others. The one thing I imagine the region definitely has is something NCR soldiers wish for constantly. Patrol in the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. The Middle East had gone to war against the European Commonwealth in 2052, as mentioned previously. The invaders were eventually repulsed after the oil fields had run dry, with the nations of the Middle East heavily depleted after defending their homelands. These nations were described as being left in ruins following the decades-long conflict, primarily due to small exchanges of nuclear weaponry during the war. Israel, in particular, had been incredibly destabilized, as the city of Tel Aviv was destroyed in nuclear terrorist attacks. The Middle East would have suffered even more after the Great War, as the infrastructure and support of its nations was already in disarray following their conflicts. Any survivors of the region would have to be exceptionally hardy to survive in its apocalyptic post-war environment, as the area would have become inhospitable in the years after the bombs fell. When we speak of Asia in the Fallout universe, our primary source of information stems from China. Given the fact that they in the United States were the two world superpowers, and therefore the key instigators of the Great War, we have a large amount of source material on the nation. In regards to the other nations of Asia, sources do become a little less in-depth. We're able to state with absolute clarity that a multitude of the surrounding nations had been annexed similar to the US invasion of Canada. The only two nations referenced indirectly are the Philippines and Mongolia. The Philippines are mentioned at the start of Fallout 4, with the pre-war newsreader stating that United States troops on the island of Mambajo are preparing to drive Chinese troops into the Bohol Sea. Mongolia is mentioned via the Gobi Scout weapons in Fallout New Vegas, stating that the US and Chinese forces clashed in a vicious campaign in the Gobi Desert. The fact that such conflicts had taken place indicates that China projected a huge sphere of influence in the region. The status of nominally US-aligned nations such as the Republic of Korea and Japan is speculative. It's imagined that they may have been annexed given their proximity, or at the very least seen extremely heavy fighting if used as bases for US troops. China itself prior to the Great War was an economic and military powerhouse on par with the United States. Its government was run by the Chinese Communist Party as a single party state led by Chairman Cheng. The country had an incredibly dynamic military complex under the People's Liberation Army, which consisted of various branches ranging from the Army, Navy and Air Force. Robots were also shown to be used in combat and support roles, as seen from the Liberator robots. Tanks were also an incredibly important part of Chinese military doctrine and used extensively during the Alaskan War. However, they began to be easily countered by power armor, after which they rushed to perfect their own versions. Their most powerful asset was their ability in espionage and intelligence. The Chinese intelligence forces were unparalleled, being able to infiltrate a plethora of levels of US military and civilian organizations, while barely letting any information slip to their American counterparts. Chinese intelligence forces are revealed to have infiltrated locations such as Hoover Dam in the Mojave to an intelligence facility in West Virginia. Their highest concentration, however, was found to be in Washington, D.C. Many intelligence cells are found in locations around the Capital Wasteland. The most notable are the still-alive ghoul forces of the People Liberations Army found at Mama Dolce's food factory. Key to their ability in espionage was their extremely sophisticated stealth technology, which was hijacked by the Americans in the form of stealth boys. While stealth boys are a clunky, single-use and limited power machine, the Chinese used black earth stealth suits, which allowed the wearer to become invisible indefinitely. Recorded transcripts from military defense analysts also indicate that an entire fleet of nuclear stealth submarines had been constructed, capable of unloading nuclear devastation without detection. All this information is to indicate that like the US, China was an immensely powerful country, both militarily and technologically. Therefore, like the survivors found within the Fallout series, it's likely Chinese survivors would be able to utilize their advanced technology to have a better shot at survival. We know the nation was heavily bombarded, and would therefore be in a comparably irradiated and devastated state to the wasteland seen in game. It may also have had a state of further disarray, given that the war had reached its shores prior to the bombs falling, since the US had captured Shanghai and Nanjing. It's evident from terminal entries that food rationing for civilians had been allocated via lottery, suggesting a severe shortage in essentials. Chinese citizens can be found within the Fallout series, with the most friendly being Captain Zhao, the captain of the submarine that destroyed Boston. Zhao especially is a unique case, especially for this video, as he may be one of the few individuals who would be able to comment on the post-war status of China. 
This is due to the fact that after assisting him in fixing his submarine, he intends to return to China, stating emphatically that if China is gone, he will rebuild, house by house. And saving the best to last, we have Australia. There are honestly very, very few references to Australia, or even any country really in Oceania, throughout the series. The only tidbit we do have are visible skulls of horned kangaroos found in Fallout 2. This response to radiation would suggest that kangaroos on Australian soil would also be susceptible to such a mutation. There honestly is no other information really provided of the status of Australia. If the rest of the world is anything to base this off, I would imagine Australia probably is in a similar position. I do picture post-war Australia as the same as the universe seen in Mad Max, partly because Fallout itself was inspired by the Mad Max series. And although they aren't Australia, New Zealand may as well be. The only reference in game to them is in Fallout New Vegas, with a great Khan named Melissa who speaks with a distinct New Zealand accent. Awaiting a delivery, but it's a no-show. I'm guessing that the death clause in the quarry have something to do with that. Now, this unfortunately was not a canon entry for New Zealanders, but from a simple recording error. Joshua Sawyer had clarified that the voice actress, Zoe Bell, had recorded her lines in her native New Zealand accent due to a miscommunication from an unnamed staff member. We therefore can't count Melissa as a New Zealand character, and we therefore can't comment on any other status of the country. And with that, we've run out of countries to talk about. Since the game's developers themselves have clarified that the status of nations in Fallout are intentionally unclear, we can never be absolutely certain on how they have ended up. Hopefully there may be more appearances from characters, or even locations themselves of other nations in subsequent games. 